All right, our first question is from Jesse Jesus. What are some best ab exercises that will help with mind-to-muscle connection? I'm having trouble with my lower abs. What was the name of the YouTube video that we did, Sal? Hip flexor deactivator. Yes. The deactivator. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, so let me address first the whole lo- lower ab thing. Um, your abdominal muscles have kind of two attachments. Um, the m- one attachment is at the pelvis. Another attachment is at the rib cage. And so when the abs contract, it's that whole, it's the whole abs. area. Yeah, there is no lower or upper abs. There is no other attachment. So I know a lot of people say, do this exercise for lower abs or this exercise for upper abs. It doesn't really work that way. The abs all contract uh, or they don't. And the two anchor points are at the bottom and the top, and that's it. But as far as connecting to the abs, this is actually quite important. In fact, more people have issues connecting their, to their ab muscles than don't. Uh, just feeling them burn doesn't mean you necessarily connect to them very well. There's a lot of muscles that can fold the body forward. So when you look at ab exercises in general, especially all the, the classic ab exercises, they involve folding your body forward. But you can also fold the body forward using your hip flexors, uh, for example. And those tend to be more active uh, in, in most people. The abs fold the body forward at the lumbar spine, not at the, at the hips. That's what will work the abs. So one of the things you want to do to help connect to your abs is understand the function of the abs. It literally rolls you forward at the lumbar spine, uh, at the lower part of your spine, not at the, at the hips. So if you do a leg raise, the raising of the legs isn't working your abs. It's the rotating of the pelvis that works the abs. If you do any kind of a sit-up, it's the rolling forward that, st- that works the abs. It's not the folding forward. Uh, necessarily that works the abs. So consider that first. But the most common reason why people don't feel the abs connecting is because the hip flexors are doing a lot of the work. And I did that video that Adam talked about called uh, that I called hip flexor deactivators. And essentially what you do in that, in that movement, and I'll walk you through it through the podcast, you lay on your back and you put your feet up on a bench or a physio ball with your knees bent, push down into the bench or the physio ball with your heels, lift your hips up off the floor just a little bit, And what you're doing is you're activating your glutes. You want to squeeze your glutes. Now, the reason why you want to activate your glutes is because when you activate one muscle, it helps to relax the opposing muscle. And the opposing muscles from the glutes are the hip flexors. So now that the glutes are active, the hip flexors are more likely to stay out of the exercise. And then you can practice slow crunches. And this will help you feel the abs rather than do movements with your crunches. Serene also did another video uh, with the with an assisted uh, perfect sit-up, which I love to teach. I think that's a, a great way to teach somebody to really activate their abs and, and slow it down. A lot of times um, when people struggle with feeling their abs, it's like a speed thing, right? They're just using momentum and they're rocking their head and their neck and they're like Salison, using so many other muscles to – get them up, get the exercise up. And they feel a little bit in the abs because it's, uh, you know, maybe on the way. Stabilizing. Yeah, stabilizing or the way down, right? Uh, As you go back down on the floor, you feel them a little bit. And so you assume that you are working them, uh, but they can be worked so much better. And just by slowly rolling the spine up, like in a perfect sit-up, articulating that. uh, Is that perfect sit or McGill sit-up? Is it the same thing? Yeah, I, I don't know if it's called a. I don't know what a McGill setup is. Yeah. So it could be. It could be. Na- I've I've seen different people call it uh, different titles. I know. I think uh, Serene titled it a uh, assisted perfect setup mm-hmm. uh, when she did the video. It's a really good video because you. It's already hard. I think most people are challenged to even do one. Sure. So using a band uh, to kind of like help assist you up, so you could really focus on the rolling of the spine. I think is a great exercise. And it's uh, yeah, it's educating too to see kind of where. When you start to articulate each one of those vertebrae, like where the sticking points are, where it's extra hard for you to get uh, summon that strength to kind of curl your body into that position. But yeah, to learn that process of being able to actually roll forward and, and use your abs, you know, in that direction is 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 eye opening when when you get it down. Oh yeah, uh, physio ball crunches are good at this. But you know, here's the other thing with physio ball crunches: you can also make it so that you don't really work your abs very much at all. Oh, easily. Yeah. So if you get on a physio ball and it, Physio ball crunch is, by the way, one of my favorite ab exercises, if you do them properly. You put your lower back on the top of the ball, bend your legs, uh, and then put your feet on the floor, and then push your butt up. And while you're pushing your butt up, allow your lower back to wrap around the ball, so now you're kind of arching back, and then crunch over the ball while pushing your hips up. 
This will help anchor the hips and kind of get those hip flexors out of the movement and help you focus on the abs. Yeah, that's one of the biggest things I see people misusing it is they'll start dropping their hips down and letting their hips kind of move with and roll with the exercise. And they start just rocking, just rocking with back it. and forth.